let's talk a bit about the basics of routing. So we've seen some of those examples so far of uh, needing to access certain IPs to get to different subnets, talked about different network sizes and breaking your network up and then having to get to each of those. Uh, so when we talk routing, we're talking layer three as we mentioned. So layer three we do our, is our routing engine. So our internetwork devices that speak layer three are going to be your routers or your layer three switches, which really a layer three switch is a router. It just runs at a faster speed. It runs at wire speed. And nowadays, that's kind of your preferred routing device, uh, unless you're needing to interface with a specific type of connection, since switches usually handle uh, Ethernet connections nowadays. So how do, we, how do we route? Let's take a look at my system again. And if I look at my IP config. I'm going to go up and take a look here. Here's my interface, my local area connection. In here, I have a default gateway. The default gateway is my, uh, what's also considered my gateway of last resort. So if my system doesn't know how to get to a destination, it will go out that default gateway. That default gateway is my next hop router. The router will then receive my packets and then look in its table to see if it knows how to get to that destination and then if not it's going to go and talk to his default gateway and then the next one's going to do that and he's going to go check his table do I know how to get to this destination if not I'm going to go out that default gateway and each one along each hop along the way that uh, that header is going to decrement remember we talked about the uh, TTL the time to live value in the header that's going to decrement each time so 128 127 126 it might be a different value depending on your operating system. It's defined based upon what OS you use and things like that. So that's that's how the default gateway system works. So let's look at my my routes on my system here. On on each system, even uh, your end devices such as this uh, PC has its own route table. So we can do route print, and that's going to show me my my routes. Uh, I can have IPv4 and IPv6 on this. The newer operating systems, they support both IPv4 and 6. So let's take a look at the 4s. So in IPv4, I have a number of networks defined. Uh, we have the destination network in its subnet mask, and then what interface we're going to go out to get to it, as well as a metric. So the default um, ones I have in here are for different interfaces that I have for virtual machines and things I have configured. But the basic idea is, if I'm, uh, for example, my local network. If I'm trying to get to my local network, which is this, it's going to be part of this subnet. So 192.168.77.0 slash 24. We'll talk about how this converts into a slash 24, but it's a 24-bit mask. That means anything from 77.1 up to 77.254 are usable hosts on my network. Uh, if I try to get to any of those hosts, it will go out my interface and go talk to it. It goes right on the link and goes out my interface and goes talks to the local network. If I need to get somewhere else, let's say I try to talk to Google's DNS servers on 8.8.8.8.8. Well, I don't have that in my route table, do I? So it needs to go out somewhere else. What it's going to do is match on the quad zero route at the top. The quad zero route is your default gateway route. It's your gateway of last resort. Uh, your default route, there's a lot of different names for basically what's happening here, but it will match on that quad zero, and we'll talk about how that matching works. Uh, it uses an anding process to determine how that, uh, how an IP address matches. But it's going to go out that quad zero route, and it's going to send it to, not just out on the link and talk to whoever is out there, but it's going to send it directly to my default gateway. That's my next hop route. It's going to go out my interface, and then we see a lower metric here. So how this works is, the, low, the metrics, you might be wondering, well, what does that mean? The metrics mean uh, the lower the metric, the more trusted the route is. So if you have multiple routes to the same location, you can have lower metrics uh, on certain ones to make them preferable to be used instead of the other routes. Uh, it's called floating statics, but uh, usually it'll, it'll also be for when we talk about dynamic routing protocols. Certain routing protocols are more trusted, so they have a lower metric. Uh, in this example, I have a metric of 10 for my uh, gateway of last resort. So pretty much it's going to um, be the preferred route for anything that doesn't match below. I could override that, but 
Uh, that's the default setup here. So any traffic that it doesn't know where to send, it's going to go talk to this guy. It's going to say, all right, hopefully the, he knows how to get there. If he doesn't know, uh, he'll take a look at it, check out the information, check his route table. If he doesn't know how to get there, then he'll send it to his default gateway. And in that gateway, we'll send it to his gateway, and so on and so on. And it's going to go out there to the Internet. And each time, that TTL is going to decrement. So it's going to go from you know 128, 127 to 126, as we mentioned. So how does it really check that? So I mentioned about the encapsulation and decapsulation. So remember we talked about here's our data, right? This is from my application. And I have some port information on here. So here's my port. Interesting writing sideways. So there's my port. Uh, and then, so that's from my transport layer, layer 4. So on layer 3, I'm going to have some additional information on here. And this is going to be my IP. And that's going to be, remember we looked at that header information uh, in Wireshark? It had a uh, source and destination IP address. That, that's what it's going to be taking a look at. And then as it goes down, it's going to hit the layer 2 on its way out the interface. And it's going to get some MAC address information, which we'll talk about. And then it'll have a little extra tail on that as well. Uh, and then it'll go out onto the uh, onto the cable, whatever that might be, or the radio waves or something. And it'll get turned into you know some sort of data stream, right? So there's that's what happens. It goes down the stack, across the interface, uh, across the media. It's going to get received by something, and then it's going to be interpreted. So let's say this data was destined for, like I've mentioned before. Google's DNS, 8.8.8.8.8. .8 so I don't have that in my route table, so it needed to go to a, a default gateway. So this is going to go to my default gateway. We're going to send it to uh, my next top address. In my IP, I'm going to have a source and destination of uh, my computer. My source is going to be my computer, 77.151, I think it is right now. And then the destination is going to be 8.8.8.8. .8 on the layer 2, we'll talk about how this works, but we're going to have a MAC address of my interface as the source, and then the destination MAC address of my, uh, my router. So it's going to go to my router, because he's my default gateway. I don't know how to get to 8.8. .8. It's not in my routing table. We have to go send it to my default gateway. He's going to go hopefully figure out where to send this. It's going to get received by uh, the default gateway, my router, at 77.1. He's going to take a look at this. So he's going to receive this this protocol data unit. He's going to strip off. It's going to strip off layer two, and then he's going to inspect layer three. And he's going to say, "All right, what's the source and destination?" Most likely, he's just going to care about the destination. But if he has access lists, he's going to check out the source too. Most likely. So we're going to take a look at the destination. And say, "All right, he needs to get to eight dot eight dot eight dot eight." I'm going to go take a look at my routing table. Let's go check my routing table. Do I have, I might have a route for, you know, 192.168.something. I might have a route for 10.something. I might have a route for something else. But you know what? I don't have a route for 8.8.8.8. Let's go send it out my default route. And that's going to go out to whatever my uh, default gateway is from there, which might be like, you know, 72.1. 100.4 or something, whatever my default gateway is for my uh, internet provider. So then he's going to send it out to him. Uh, when he does that, he's going to have to put a new layer 2 um, encapsulation on there. And he's going to send it out on the wire. He's going to go send it to this guy. This guy's going to receive it. And then he's going to do the same thing. He's going to receive this protocol data unit, take a look. He's going to strip off layer 2 again going to take a look at layer 3 and say, do I know where 8.8.8.8 is? Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know where that goes. And then it goes down and along and along and along and along, along the line. Once it gets to some router that knows how to get there, then it will send it out whatever interface that needs to go to. So that's how routing works. It, it, every single hop of the way, you're going to be ripping off layer 2, and you're going to be inspecting layer 3. You're going to be taking a look at that header information. That's how that routing works. So remember, this happens for every single packet. Remember when we opened up Wireshark and I opened the Google's website? I had hundreds of packets there just for a simple website, uh, which is you know a very small website by comparison. 
every single packet had to go through that process probably a dozen times to get there because there might be a dozen routers from my location to Google servers and then every single packet of those hundreds of packets needs to be de-encapsulated by ripping off layer 2 inspect layer 3, check its routing table, and then re-encapsulate it, send it on the wire, send it to another router, de-encapsulate layer 2, check out layer 3, let's take a look at that destination address, check my routing table, no, it doesn't, doesn't go to there, I don't know where to send it, re-encapsulates it with layer 2 to its default gateway and along the line. Does it for every single packet along the way. That's the basics of routing. So you can take a look at that on your host systems as you saw, uh, with route print um, on Windows systems for example, uh, you can do route in Linux, you can do IP config slash all to take a look at your IP information, the real basic things, IF config on Linux, for example, or IW config, depending on what you're using. Um, the, and that's really what determines how to send traffic are, are those route tables. And you can override those route tables. We can make our own routes on our end devices or on our internetwork devices. We can put our own routes in there to override the functionality. Uh, we can do static routes which we'll talk about and dynamic routes which automatically you know add and remove routes for us which is a nice method uh, and we do that with for a variety of in, uh, routing protocols when we get to dynamic routing there's different ones such as RIP, eGRIP, OSPF, there's BGP for external routing we'll talk about all that stuff uh, but that's really the basics of routing with that uh, the route table take a look at that learn how your traffic gets somewhere go into Wireshark go to a website, take a look at its destination, and then look at your route table and say, okay, I understand that it doesn't match one of these addresses. This is why it's going out my default gateway. So from here we're going to talk a bit about uh, IPv4 basics. We're going to go a bit more into you know, that 32-bit uh, address and dotted decimal notation, different types of address types uh, in IPv4, uh, and then we'll talk a bit about subnetting coming up.